Hello. If you've come this far, you've found the video is interesting. In the last one we have, proposed a geography of the island of Atlantis, reconstructed the Atlantic coasts where the submerged perimeter wall was, reformed the ancient Gulf of Cadiz, found the missing arms of the Guadalquivir which formed the double estuary of the Tartessos, estimated the north coast and the islands of Asta and Trebugena, marked the peaks and the hills, retraced the contour lines on the central plain of the island where the Rio Salado flows, Shown the quarries on San Cristobal Hill which may have provided some of the material for the construction of Atlantis. In this video, we will compare its geography to ancient maps. The maps you will see are taken from the works of Professor Diaz Montezano. We will resume his translation of the maps. He identified several hundred maps of Egyptian periods around the 2nd millennium BC. It should be remembered that the story of Atlantis by Plato is told to him by Solon, who got it from Egyptian priests. The Egyptian maps are an illustration of the Book of the Dead. They appear on sarcophagi or papyri and are therefore a route to the resurrection of the deceased. It follows the path of the sun towards the west to arrive on the island of paradise. These maps also depict the land of the gods Shu and Osiris and many others. According to Diodorus, it is in the Atlanteans and in the neighboring country of the ocean that, according to mythology, the gods were born. Later he writes, The Atlanteans live on the coast of the ocean and a very fertile country. They seem to distinguish themselves from their neighbors by their piety and by their hospitality. They claim that their country is the cradle of the gods. Osiris on the left holds a whip and a hook. On each side of his crown a feather. Shu on the right has a feather on his head. The feather is the symbol of those who inhabit the West. Prehistoric representations on rocks in Spain show men with feathers on their heads. Osiris is one of the main Egyptian gods to whom they attribute very different titles. The big ocean, like Poseidon. The one who reigns on the harpoon, Idum. The god of waters, Idem. The god of the four pillars of the sky that jed like Atlas. That of the columns like Atlas. The one in the house of the sun, sunset. The western black bull in the book of the dead. The lord of the roar. The lord of the two horns. The head of the Amendi, the west. The one in the offering region, Hotbet. That in the arable humid region in reed marshes, Aru, Ayalet. The Lord of the Blessed on Paradise Island. Shu is the god who supports the sky as Atlas supported it. He is often depicted supporting the god as not the starry sky with his arms. This is the Titan Atlas of the works of Hercules. Shu and Osiris are shown in blue, the same color as the clothing of the Atlantean kings when they sacrifice a bull. Plato describes the ritual after the bullfight of the kings as follows. When darkness had come, and the fire of sacrifices had cooled, each of them was wearing a beautiful dark blue robe. For the Egyptians, this island is therefore located in the far west. The Egyptians attribute the island to the god of the waters, like the Poseidon god of the Atlanteans. Sometimes we find the name Flood Island in Egyptian it is pronounced Iaspania. The Romans named Spain Hispania adding to the confusion between the Atlantis Empire and its royal island Atlantis. The empire stretched from Spain and then rose to the Garonne, the Rhone, and Italian Tuscany, to the north, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya to the south and the Mediterranean islands to Crete and Cyprus. Also called also the mighty island of battles Plato speaks of the fight of the Atlanteans against the peoples of the continental Mediterranean including the Greeks. With all this, the comparison is striking with our location of Atlantis, this island which was full of beauty, wonders and sweets, to the point of making it a paradise. Professor Diaz Montezano in his book Atlantis Rising places the island just after the Strait of Gibraltar. He joined the theology of the geologist Colina Gerard which places Atlantis on the shoals of Spartel. These funds had emerged over 10,000 years ago when the sea was at least 100 meters lower. 
In this, he does not take into account the actual positioning of the columns of Atlas or Hercules and Cities, as we have seen. We see that the island of Egyptian maps corresponds in many ways to the description of Plato. In summary of the texts, an oblong island, facing a strait, a canal starting from the sea, and arriving at a city in the center of an island with a temple dedicated to a god of the sea, and two sources. We are going to see four different Egyptian maps, and a drawing engraved on a rock dated to the end of the Bronze Age in Spain. We will compare them to our geography of Atlantis, to see if it fits. Here is the first. This card comes from a wall of a tomb of the 18th dynasty, between minus 1550 and minus 1292 BC. We can see at the top of the map the area of the offerings facing the columns. South of the passage the Egyptian gods with Shu the one with a feather on his head. On the island on the left, there is a canal or river that goes up towards the middle of the island like Atlantis in the texts of Plato. In the middle the symbol of the snake-headed boat with a staircase indicates a place of worship of a god. Above, two lagoons or two marshes, Oregon two sources correspond to the two sources of the Atlantis of Plato. Note the oblong shape of the island. For your information, the left part of the map is also missing from Professor Diaz Montexano's book. Let's take another one. This is the map of a fresco from the tomb of Senet Gem in Thebes. The title of this card is Floating Throne Island. The whole island is very long, and the passage very long, bordered by magnificent trees. The left coast of the island is very straight, and a point on its right coast shares two guffs or inlets. There are still the two lagoons at the top, and the canal which starts from the bottom to reach the center of the island with its temple. But for this to be in Gibraltar, there are two things that do not stick. First, the coast of Morocco is very quickly bordered to the south by the sea, like an island. The southern tip of the Straits of Spain is not shown, but has a westward bulb that does not exist. So let's take a look at the Charyudian Papyrus card now. It is titled The Resplendent Island of the Aquatic Throne. It seems more schematic than the others. We find on the left of the island, the sea, and a very straight coast. To its right, a cape shares another two handles, or two straights. It should be noted that the island no longer has one, but three channels which go back to three symbols each with a different meaning. If we decrypt them with hieroglyphs it gives the following meaning from left to right. The hill of worship, then the throne of the divine palace, finally the temple of the mighty god. Notice the resemblance to the throne of Osiris in the middle. As in the previous one, Morocco and Spain are not properly represented. The last of the Egyptian cards is taken from the papyrus of Pesherin. In the middle of the island the cartouche means the island of the eternal god of the waters. On the island, we find on the boats, the throne of the divine palace on the left, and the temple of the god on the right. The left side of the island is straight without mentioning the sea, and the right side has the point which separates two curved straits. At the top right the coast is divided into three parts which do not correspond to the southern tip of Spain. We note the presence at the bottom right of the gods leaning against a staircase of temple. This temple located after Montezano in Morocco, and which often includes the god Shu or Atlas, the one who supports the spy. Would it not be the place of worship in Hercules ex Atlas according to Homer, and therefore the place of the columns? We know a temple of Hercules further north in Cities. Let's try to reconstruct the location of these maps through our discoveries, but unlike Diaz Montezano and Colina Gerard not facing Gibraltar, but in the arms of the Tartessos. Do you see the same thing as me? For that let's turn the map a little. It looks like it works a little better. Let's compare the four areas of the map reconstituted in yellow. It sounds like but not quite anyway. It misses the Strait of the Columns of Hercules, where the Temple of Shu Atlas Melkart Heracles Hercule is located according to the ages. And if it was not the right direction yet. 
As we showed in the very first videos on Atlantis, the maps have been facing north since the middle of the Renaissance. Previously they were often oriented, that is to say with the top towards the east, as the word suggests. Let's try to do it. When you orient the map to the east it looks a lot like it. Note the area of the strait of the columns of Hercules, between 3 and 4. The area of the Tartasso South Estuary and the Rio San Pedro in 2. On the other hand, the Rio Salado Canal is no longer suitable, and was more suitable before. This island is today attached to the mainland, and traversed by a very large number of canals. Would there be other channels today outside of the Salado, that would match? This map is quite schematic, and does not correspond to our satellite maps. It slightly distorts reality. The truth is between the two versions offered. We can see the oblong shape of the island, and the sea passages, but the island is not represented well enough. Let's go to the next one. The map corresponds fairly well to this location. We find there the passage of the Strait of the Columns of Hercules, between 2 and 3. The elongated part surrounded by water at the bottom now corresponds to the island of Cadiz in 3. The passage between 2 and 3 corresponds to the Strait of the Columns of Hercules. The advance with the upward step corresponds to the area of Puerto Real in 2. The island is opposite the Strait of the Columns of Hercules. It is more clearly oriented than in the previous one. The tip of the island on the right is located in Puerto de Santa Maria. The two coves on each side are the coasts overlooking the Gulf of Cadiz, Rota, or Dona Blanca in Puerto de Santa Maria. In even more schematic maps, this is what forms a line Y. The only problem is the existence of San Fernando Island, the reconstruction of which is made by academics is difficult to dispute. Apart from drilling for studies, it is difficult to reconstruct this part of coast which would correspond to 7 meters on the Atlantic side, and which today is largely filled. Taking a lower coastline of 7 meters, there is nothing to confirm the presence of a different coastline between Puerto Real and Sancti Petri. Finally, the two lagoons or springs at the top of the island are not the representation of the two notched entrances of Ligastic Lake in 4. Given the proximity of the sea, these lagoons could be flooded according to the tides since the texts indicate that the Guadalquivir was subject to the tides. Let's take a quick look at the penultimate of the Egyptian maps. This map is even more schematic. On this map we discover three channels on the island apparently leading to three different places, or at least to several sites. Can we find them? We find there the two zones too, and three forming the line Y of the Strait of the Columns of Hercules leading to the island between two and three. The place of the offerings to the gods is located on the island of Cadiz in three. Finally, let's see the last most schematic and complicated map of the area. There are five zones in all the island does not have one or three canals, but two leading to a temple and a palace of the gods. Surely the Temple of Poseidon, and the Palace of Atlas. On the island of Cadiz we see the gods in a squatting position in front of the stairs of a temple in five. It represents the Temple of Hercules or Atlas, the son of the god Poseidon. Each of the five zones is perfectly identified, and looks fairly good, but Cadiz is slightly oversized in height. Maybe to draw the crouching gods, and the temple inside. Now let's move on to a card that looks more rustic, but has many other interests. It is a petroglyph drawing found on a wall at Campanario near Batajas, near the famous Tartsian sanctuary of Concho Rono in Extremadura, in the north of Andalusia. Professor Diaz Montesano the date of the end of the Bronze Age, that is to say in the second millennium BC. We see a horse under a bull in the upper left two symbolic animals of the Atlanteans. We can guess several motifs superimposed in the center, including a ball. Bottom right, rowing boats, and bird heads near pontoons of a harbor or ladders. 
in the middle on the left four concentric rings and a kind of boat superimposed. The M-shaped water symbol appears on the largest ring and above the smallest boat. On the last rings of the city ladders or port pontoons go down into the right. Professor Diaz Montezano sees Spain and the north of Africa with a large Atlantic island opposite the Strait of Gibraltar. We guess by looking at this pattern shapes that remind us of parts of our previous cards. We are going to draw the outlines and color the parts that correspond to the water and then try to find each area. The parts that do not match are rare. I did not highlight a black line in the middle of the zone too, but it can correspond to my island of Mesas de Asta which according to the times could be cut in half. For reasons of clarity I have not isolated it from my previous reconstructions. In addition, above the red numbers too, and three at part in the shape of a peninsula is not found in our areas. It is quite small, and you only have to compare the zones one by one to see the obvious analogy of the rest. The island of Atlantis on the petroglyph is quite large in one. We can clearly recognize the tip of the island of Astorigia in two, and the trapezoidal shape of part three. We even see the point in three which sinks facing the stall of the river. Likewise for the end of the area of land between the Guadalete and the San Pedro in four. It is very small, but contributes to the overall impression not to mention the part of Puerto Real in five. You can even see the bay on the bay facing the island of San Fernando. The only thing missing is the island of Cadiz. For the island of Atlantis, we should note the exaggeration of the mouth of the Rio Salado in six which could form an anchorage as today between the points of Rota and Puerto de Santa Maria. On the other hand, it is important to note an important characteristic compared to the texts of Plato. The city is not surrounded by three water rings, but four with the water symbol on the last. Is it a mistake? Is it voluntary? Another city? Was it Plato who distorted Solon's story, or the sculptor of this apparently contemporary work of the city? However, the location seems to correspond well. We will have the opportunity to talk about this in the following videos. Here sorry. It was a bit long. I hope I have convinced you that the ancient island of the Egyptian gods was Atlantis in the middle of the island facing the Gulf of Cadiz and the columns of the Temple of Hercules. Additional questions arose was the number of city water ditches three or four? Were there one, two, or three or more canals on the island of Atlantis? In the next videos we will try to reconstruct the Atlantis canals and their mouths in relation to the minus 7 meter coast. If you want more detail on these cards and their symbols read the books of Professor Diaz Montezano which detail all the names and drawings and interpret them on whole chapters. This video is only a succinct synthesis of his translation and interpretation work to which we must pay tribute even if we do not agree with his theory. If this video has you over, drop a thumb or a comment. Thank you for your attention.